Funny how that happens. Look what just showed up in the mail. Like clockwork. This is the Mystery Tackle Box Pro Box. Brought to you by Catchco and MysteryTackleBox.com. What do we have inside that I can custom paint? Impact. Lunker Hunt Pro Series. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe. Looks like a little yellow perch design. We've got the J Pro's Flash. Some Trapper Tackle. Wow. I haven't seen Trapper Tackle in a while. That is interesting. Little tips and tricks. The Dibble. Gotta have the Dibble. Inside, Roadrunner Randy Howe's Classic Runner 819. That would be these. Looks like a little underspend deal. Very cool. Castaic Loco 10. Haven't gotten to that yet. But ooh. This might be the dealio for the repaint. So we have two possible contenders. VNM Bates Pro J or J Pros. Yep, I saw that. That's that one. Got some Excite Bates, Raptor Tail Jr. Nice little. Looks like three and a half inch, four inch. I see some biospawn exopods. These things are awesome as well. All right, so I've got a couple of candidates. It looks like I might have a new sticker. Love it. Good deal. Let's paint something cool today. If you guys watched through the intro, you know we're going to be doing a Mystery Tackle Box spray session today. This is the Pro Box, and I have picked out a dandy. This is a cool little bait. This Castaic Loco 10 is medium to deep diving. It's got some unique features on it. We'll get into some of that here in a, in a moment. It does have a hook keeper. It also has this little ball on the bottom of it. Helps with weight distribution and movement as it glides through the water when you're working it. It's got that really wild wobble and good hunting action, and I have seen it hook up on quite a few big bass there's a couple of links in the description below if you want to check out mystery tackle boxes slam with a couple of guys please by all means watch this little thing catch fish so to pre-qualify you really wouldn't have to change it but because i'm an artist and a painter i just like goofing with stuff so I've gotten a lot of questions lately. Will you please do saltwater patterns? So this one is kind of going to be brackish. I have seen these guys in cichlid tanks and, and various. They can get as, as low as 7.0 on the pH, which is kind of in the middle. But um, this body, to me, screams puffer. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's not a, on a scale of 1 to 10. It's probably a 5 level of difficulty, but only because it requires a couple of stencils. That's what we're going to be doing. That's what we're going to be using. So let's get into it. There are a few brackish freshwater puffer fish we can work with. The reason that I'm picking this particular one is that it is the most salt oriented of all of them. This is the Tetraodon fluviatilis. It is known commonly as the green puffer fish. It'll go up to about four, five inches in the wild. Not a whole lot bigger than that. It's on the smallish side, but you will see them in certain inshore areas. Now, even though it is the green puffer fish, we're going to start by layering in right about it where that lateral line would have been. A little bit of wicked golden detail yellow. And we're going we're gonna to try and mimic where that lateral line would have been. And if you'd like a little bit better of a view here, I will show it to you against a little bit darker of a backdrop. Just enough to get a good coat. And then we're going to fold some green into it. To our Wicked Detail Gold, I'm adding just a little bit in the chamber of this Pearl Lime. It's a very light green. And what that's going to do 
just kind of give this a little bit of glitter and it's going to lighten that yellow up on top so that we still can see that yellow underneath but we're going to make it more true to form and follow the characteristics that this fish has in the wild. The last green that I want to put on top is just a little bit of fluorescent green just to kind of brighten up, make it pop a little bit. And I'm kind of I'm going to come down into the cheeks as well. Just hit the top so that we can keep that lime color down part of the sides. And we're gonna get a good heat set on this now. I did wet on wet up to this point, but now that we've blended well, and see, keeping it wet on wet and holding back on your heat sets also helps your paint blend a little bit better than if you were just to heat set every single time. You'll get a lot of overspray, whereas this time, if you have yellow and then light green and then a little bit darker of a green like this fluorescent green is, as long as you have that wet paint underneath of it, it will blend better. Heat set. Now that we've got that proper heat set on this, I'm going to be using two different stencils. I'm going to be using the smaller reptile scales on the sides of this and the larger scale over the top. And that's going to represent the puffer bubble type pattern that it has. And these are both from Brian Best Across the Pond, Anarchy Model UKs. There is a link in the description below, so make sure you guys take a look at that. He does get them across the ocean lightning fast. So if you guys are looking for good stencils and uh, you want something a little bit different, a little bit out of the box, these are fantastic. So on the sides of this, I'm going to be using the black magenta because it's not a true black at least from what I can see in all the pictures and the one that you guys are somewhere up here you're playing along with. I'm going to pull the pressure down on this. Now, we're not going to go all the way across the body down to the belly with this. We're going to kind of follow our yellow outline. And we're going to leave the belly the way it is. And we're doing that because that's the way the pattern looks on this particular bait. So we just want a nice, light, once over. Well, that looks really good. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Try and follow that contour line that that yellow has. Just lay it across the bait. And make sure you have a, a fairly tight adhesion. Don't move it. And side number two. I'm also going to darken the eyes just a little bit. Give it a little bit of depth and contrast. We are going to be laying in some specialty eyes on this. I'm going to clean that chamber and then we're going to apply in a straight black this top. I've got some jet black detail from Wicked Colors loaded into the chamber at this point. And now we're going to come back with a little bit larger of a reptile scale pattern. And we're going to run this right over the back. Now we're not going to crush this trigger here. We want a little bit lighter of a spray. Look at how that came out. Now that, folks, looks like a puffer. We're going to add in a little bit of detail to this really kick-ass gill plate on the side. And then I'm going to kind of give a sheen in this Comart opaque pearlescent. And when you do that to a bait, it really shines the sides and the top and the belly to where it's going to look more like a realistic version of this bait. It's the way that a fish would swim and once that glitter hits the water as it's moving through it's really going to trigger those fish. Now for this gill plate 
I'm taking a look at it and I'm going to just draw it as I see it. And then there's an inner one that we can kind of probably get just by doing a normal loop here, but I think that might be a little bit big, but that's going to do exactly what I need it to do. And then I'll just take an X-Acto knife, bring that down, one more, and like that, just like that, so that when we have this, we lay that against the gill plate, that's actually pretty good. So, because it's so small, one of the things that I learned to do a couple of years ago is to make your tools work for you. So take an alligator grip here, and that way you can kind of lay this in across the gill plate. But I want to position this to where it's going to work for me. Now we can just come back in. And if you need to steady your hand, which a lot of you, including me, I need to do it too, just run, just kind of cup your hand against your alligator clips on your helping hands. Just like always, when you guys are doing any kind of shading with any kind of stencil, you want to hit more paint on the stencil itself and kind of let that overspray mist act as the uh, shading itself and you're going to get much better results than if you just blast the paint onto the edge of this. So always use this as a shield And then we can come up on the top of this and grab the top of this skill plate, just like we did on the other side. And there we have it. Now we've got that really cool gill plate pattern. And if you want to continue to trick it out, yes you can. In fact, you could probably grab the inside of this. Matter of fact, let me cut just a little bit more. Probably get away with just doing scissors. And with this one, just I just need a little oval here. And then we can come in and do this inner, because there is an inner gill plate. Very cool. And flip to the other side. Get that one done too. And when you flip these over, you always want to pull any wet paint off so that you're not laying down wet paint anywhere you don't want wet paint to be. And voila! want to bring this over and get a really good heat set on it. And before we put the eyes in, I was talking about that opaque pearlescent. I want to shoot that across the entire bait. It is going to mute the, uh, the black down a little bit, but it's also going to give that real pretty pearl. Just really make that bait pop. Ta-da! Now that we have a good heat set, we can go ahead and pull away the tape that we've got on the bill. Like I tell you guys all the time, make sure that you get the corners of this lip as well. Just fold that tape over. It's going to give you a better presentation when you hand over that bait to your customer, even if you're doing it for yourself. I think the fish like it better too. Okay, we're over at the finishing desk. Fantastic. We are almost done. Down the home stretch. Top down view for you guys on this one. I have selected some really cool natural looking eyes that will match the puffer. And we're just going to add a little, a little bit of super glue in here. 
actually, let's take this mess off of here. There we go. Don't know why that was on there. Super glue, at least this Gorilla stuff, is usually really good about not getting stuck to the tip where it's at. Make sure that our pupils are forward and just drop these in. There we go. There's one side. Pupils forward this way. And we have got our eyes. give you a closer look I'm gonna let's see if we can get a better non well see it's I've got all that here's your top-down view a little bit better of a close-up for you guys and that is your green puffer folks I hope I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things today thanks for hanging out with me on the channel I appreciate the view. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.